G'day, Blade Dickheads, Vaping Bogan, back again for another Ridgy Didge review. Hope you're all having a fucking perler. Yep, we got some more Voro stuff. Hopefully you're not too bored with it. <laughs> this, though, is pretty fucking interesting. It is a new Boro bridge from Umbrella Mods. It's called The Vision, and it is, I think, the first one of its kind. I don't think I've seen anything like this before. It's a top-down airflow Boro bridge, so there's no air coming in in here. All of it comes in through the top around the drip tip and it goes down the chimney, comes out either side of your coils and then goes back up the chimney. Very clever, kind of the same way a top-down airflow RTA works, but I don't think we've seen it done on a Boro bridge, which is pretty fucking awesome. It means no condensation whatsoever on the inside of your Boro mod. And of course, I've got it sitting in my brand new released Stubby AIO mod. And this drip tip, if you're wondering, not the stock one, it comes from Monarchy over in Poland. So pretty fucking innovative, the design here. The big draw card for me is the no condensation, because if you've been using Boro devices for a while, you know that you get condensation on the inside of the mod. That's just a, a factor um, with pretty much all Boro bridges. And I'm pleased to report after extensive use in both MTL and direct lung mode, yeah, of course, there's no fucking condensation in there. It's basically impossible because <laughs> the inlet for the uh, airflow is all up around the top here. So I'm running it in direct lung mode at the moment. I started with mouth to lung and then we did a build uh, in direct lung. So I've got a 0.23 ohm uh, alien coil in here. Let's take it for a ripperoo at 30 watts. Plenty of fucking clouds, as you can see, and uh, pretty airy. I'm currently running it with no airflow pins installed, so it's uh, quite a loose draw. I think it's a little bit more suited to mouth-to-lung vaping. We'll talk about why that is a bit later. We're going to get down in a moment and uh, take this direct lung coil out and put back in the mouth-to-lung coil that I originally installed, and we'll do a little wicking tutorial for you as well. But before we can get to any of that, yeah. We've got to have a fucking beer. Today's beer comes all the way from Norway. It is from Amundsen Brewing, and it's called Ray Ray Juice. A pineapple, mango, passion fruit, and marshmallow pastry sour. Fuck me, it sounds like a bit of a mouthful. Uh, as I said, uh, Amundsen are brewing over in, uh, I think, Oslo, Norway. But let's just see how it bloody tastes. Let's drink a beer. Let's drink it. Oh, look at that. You can definitely tell we've got pineapple, mango, and passion fruit in there. Certainly fucking smells like it too. A bloody cheers. That is a fucking pastry sour. Yeah, got all the elements there. Real nice mango-y, kind of thick mango sort of taste to it, almost like a mango nectar kind of thing. Then you've got the, uh, the tangy sort of pineapple in there and passion fruit, and then you get that pastry finish. You get that sort of almost like a pie crust kind of uh, flavor. A nice fucking style, that one. You get the fruitiness and then the kind of bakery finish. Oh yeah, that's really good. Tangy, just a little bit creamy, quite thick on that mouth feel. The mango and the passion fruit, really, really obvious. Then you get some uh, pineapple and then, yeah, just finishes nicely with that sort of uh, bakery, crusty kind of pastry taste. I guess that creaminess is coming maybe from the marshmallow. It definitely has a sort of slight candy, fluffy, vanilla, marshmallow kind of taste to it. That is just a really fucking well-layered beer. Let's pair it up with a fucking liquid. Trying out something new for the first time. This one is from Beetlejuice. I think they're an Australian brand. And uh, it's a passion fruit lemonade. Well, we've got the passion fruit in there that should go well with our fucking beer. Quite like this liquid. I said, just cracked it uh, for the first time today. It's got a, a very sort of refreshing kind of passion fruit flavor to it. It's not super sweet. The lemonade kind of gives it a, a nice sort of cleansing, refreshing sort of feel. And then you a little bit of that nice sort of tropical passion fruit. Should go well with this beer, I reckon. Yeah, that's just super tropical now. The, yeah, the added passion fruit in there really kind of lifting some of those sort of flavors out of the beer. It's just an absolutely fucking stunning beer, this one. I think the uh, liquid's kind of chilling out the pastry flavors a bit. I'm getting just more tropical, sour elements. Yeah, that's fair dinkum good. 
very fruity, very fruity. Though the um, sort of kind of candiness of the liquid goes nicely with that marshmallow that's in the beer. That's just a, a very nice little tropical kind of candy little mix there. Anyway, enough waffling over this shit. Let's get down the up and closest. What we're going to do is have a good squiz over how this airflow works. It's a very unique, very clever little design. Then we're going to whip out the direct lung coil and pop the uh, mouth lung coil back in there and show you how to wick it. Let's have a sticky beak. Oh, fucking righty then. So this is the packaging. Your Umbrella Mods Vision RBA will come in. Just a sleek, clean looking box. Let's see what you get inside. Well, you got the tank, you got the chimney, you got the special flush nut, 510 adapter, direct lung drip tip, mouth to lung drip tip, teeny tiny Allen key wrench, bag of spare O-rings, grub screws, gaskets, and airflow pins. A little card with their philosophy and a little instruction card on how to assemble it properly. But let's get into it. So it's got a lovely, clean, minimal look to it. Kind of resembles a bit of the uh, linked and the CO Boro tanks, that lovely um, frosted PCTG tank up the top there and a media blasted stainless steel finish. Really like the look of this one. Very, very classy. And it feels very, very well machined. It feels like something out of Europe. But uh, I think with the price tag it has, it's uh, more like China. But um, yeah, very, very high grade um, machining on this thing. We'll see that as we take it apart. Now, I couldn't find any capacities listed anywhere. I think it's around about four millilitres. I think somebody said when I was uh, building this on the live build stream, it's about four millilitres. It's got a pretty clever filling port. Well, it's actually got two. You got your little uh, silicon band here. So kind of a traditional style. You flick this side open and pull the tab. I've cut my nails recently, so it's a, a little bit trickier for me. There we go. So you can fill it on the front there like you would on a lot of uh, Boro tanks. But um, say you've got a mod, and there are a few out there, Boro mods, that have a, a side window. Some of the more sort of higher end uh, European mods have got a little side window design. You can actually fill it from this side. There's another fill hole there. Very fucking clever. I don't think I've seen that on a Boro tank before. Very, very smart. So giving people with uh, the right sort of uh, mod uh, another option. Now, before we get to the deck, we've got to put it in the chimney because that's a, a big component of this. So you'd put it into your Boro device as is. You, you chuck it in like so. And then you're going to thread through the top, basically, um, your, your chimney. You've got to put in the special flush nut. All right. So that's going to sort of screw in to your mod. We'll put it together at the end, but imagine that sitting in the top of your mod. It's got to be a, uh, a flush nut compatible with like your billet boxes and things like that. So a Boro flush nut. So you screw that in. Uh, and then after you've screwed in your uh, flush nut, you take the chimney and you screw that in um, to the base of the tank. And it's going to sit something like that. And basically what's happening is your air is going in through these little little inlets all the way around the flush nut. You can see it's sort of cut differently to your standard flush nuts. So air's going in there, it's traveling down the uh, sort of side of the chimney, and then it's gonna go in through some little uh, airflow pins we'll see in a second, and come back out the top of the chimney there. So you're sort of connecting your uh, your drip tip to that, uh, that top section. It's just a normal sort of 510 drip tip connection. It comes with this nice little stubby clear one, it also comes with this uh, longer mouth to lung option. So you can put any 510 drip tip you like in there. I've been using my own. But um, that's basically how it works. So you're going to need, you're not going to be able to use this on um, some uh, Boro devices that don't have uh, a Boro compatible flush nut. But let's put these to one side for now and uh, get down to the fucking deck. So you've got a little bit of branding, umbrella mods on there. That's the back. All right, very clean. On the bottom here, you've got uh, sort of a, a connection point, Vision RBA, and uh, that's where you would thread in your 510 adapter. We'll put that on there now because it makes it a bit easier to get the whole deck and everything apart if you've got something to grab onto. So you just grab the, uh, the deck here and pull it out. There you go. There's a big gasket on there that kind of keeps everything nice and snug. We'll come back to the deck. Uh, and then you've got the sort of the chamber and the liquid feeding. So it's a gravity fed system, similar to uh, the way the linked worked. Um, and also I think the CO, you've got uh, these little 
pins here that are going to uh, line up with your cotton and feed liquid down. Now they do have like a little flathead connection there, but I think that's to allow liquid to kind of come out the side as well as the, the end of the holes. You can't get those out. I did try with a flathead to unscrew these air these juice pins and uh, no, they wouldn't come out. So I think they might be sort of press fit or something in there. So a little bit deceiving with that flathead design. And then you can see you've got the airflow. It's going to be coming in from either side of the coil. Uh, it's got a bit of a kind of bishop sort of design to it. If you guys remember the bishop RTA, it's the same sort of idea. You've got two airflow pins, uh, one either side of your coil. And uh, yeah, so as your chimney is in here, all right, it's going to seal everything off. Airflow is going to come down, all right, and then it's going to come out these little holes either side and then go back up the center there, up your, up your fucking chimney. All right, so let's get that thing out. The easiest way to get this section out of here is to actually screw in the chimney and then you just you just push it down because there's some O-rings in there. Don't try and pull it out with your fingers. It, it, you won't be able to do it. Um, so you just push it out with the chimney. Then you can unthread the chimney again and out comes your little uh, chamber there. So the way it's working uh, essentially is you've got these little cutouts, all right, either side. So air's going to come down the chimney, all right, on either side or all the way around, okay? So sort of the, the gap between this chimney here and the outer bit's gonna come down there and then it's gonna go through this little gap on either side and it's gonna feed down these little channels and through your airflow pin. And uh, this is how you can change those pins out. So it comes with uh, quite a variety of uh, pin sizes. You get 2.9 millimeter pins, which is what I've got in here at the moment. Uh, it's got two 1.2 millimeter pins, two 1.8 millimeter pins, uh, and two 2.1 millimeter pins, and then a single blind pin. So if you wanted to block one side and have airflow coming just through uh, the other, you can also do that. So quite similar to the way the Bishop works. And if you use something like the Bishop, you will know from experience that two times 0.9 millimeter holes doesn't equal 1.8. It's not sort of a simple maths equation. Two times 0.9 millimeter airflow pins to me feel something similar to like a 1.2 single airflow pin, maybe even a one. It's quite restrictive having two single um, 0.9 millimeter holes. It's, it's not going to feel uh, like a, a 1.8 or something like that. You could do a 0.9 on one side and a, a 1.2 on the other. It is really up to you how you mix and match them. But I really liked it in, in MTL mode with 0.9 millimeter pins. Now you can take the pins out completely and run it wide open, which I did do in direct lung mode. We just unscrew this pin here. As you can see, they're quite a, uh, a girthy hole. So if you wanted to run it really wide open, you could with that no airflow pin and it's a reasonably loose uh, restricted direct lung draw but uh, as I said I quite like it in MTL mode and that's what we're going to reinstall in here is a mouth to lung coil so I'm going to leave the uh, 0.9 millimeter pins installed. So uh, your liquid is going to be coming down through these holes here and it's going to line up with your deck. So when you're putting it together, you've got a few logos to line up. It does have a little instruction card to uh, to tell you. So you've got this little star logo here. That's got to line up with the Umbrella Mods logo like that. And you just push it in. A little O-ring will hold it all in place. And then when you're putting the deck in, you've got to match up the uh, the little lines, the little grooves on the back here. You got a little groove there, you got a little groove there, and they've got to go together like so. Don't go doing that. So let's have a look at the deck. It's a, a deck we've sort of seen before in the post design, sort of offset post there. Uh, it is going to like a uh, clockwise wrapped coil. All right, as you can see, here's a clockwise wrapped coil, the way the posts are offset, which I always like because 90% of uh, coils that are made by coilers out there are clockwise wrapped. Anti-clockwise is going to point your coil down, which is no good. You've got this little channel here, which is going to sort of guide where your cotton is going to be, but also where you want your coil to sit. You've got a little hook on one side, you clamp down with this grub screw, and on the other side, you've got the same thing. Now, I will point out that these grub screws are not the ones that it came with installed. You get a bag of spares. The ones that it comes with installed are, are flathead grub screws. Um, these are little Allen key grub screws, which I have swapped out. Now, the problem I had is the flatheads that were pre-installed in here were screwed all the way in, 
And I've got a lot of screwdrivers, but it took me like fucking good 15 minutes to find a screwdriver that would actually fit in this hole. And the only screwdriver that I had in my collection, and it took me a while to find it, is this uh, teeny tiny sort of old jeweler style uh, screwdriver, real, real tiny um, diameter on this flathead because all of my others wouldn't go in there. The, the hole was too narrow and I was going to start fucking up threads and things like that trying to jam a a wide screwdriver in there. So that was super annoying having to uh, to use one of these. A lot of people maybe won't have a screwdriver small enough, but luckily they do include some Allen key versions. So once I did get them out, uh, I just switched them to uh, to the grubs with an Allen key. Um, made it much easier to um, to install. I can use my usual set of Allen key wrenches. So uh, yeah, installing your coil, pretty sort of standard, simple stuff. We've seen this sort of thing on Boros before. You just lay your cotton into the channel there and um, you know thin it out a bit. One thing I will say is you want to thin out your cotton tufts because these uh, these holes that are in the top of the tank, they're not massive. All right, those little holes in there are pretty small and restrictive. The first time I wicked this, uh, a little while later, I re-wicked it because I was just getting a few dry hits. All right, so you're going to go some uh, less cotton than you might think because it's gravity fed, but they are pretty small holes there. And your cotton is going to be sitting in these channels and those holes are just going to basically sort of plug straight into the, uh, the cotton tuft. So I would recommend thinning out your cotton quite a bit and obviously trimming them off on the ends here so that they're not going to get in the way of your uh, your top section as it comes down. So uh, yeah, hopefully that all fucking made sense. Very, very nicely machined. Look at that. The uh, coil that I'm running in here at the moment uh, is, I said, the second build that I did. If you want to see the build stream, uh, I'll put links in the description to both of them, the MTL build and then this one here with the direct lung coil. This one is uh, three strands of 28 gauge nichrome wrapped in 38, 2.5 millimeter in a diameter and uh, it is from Breeze Tones. Now, there's meant to come in around about 0.3 ohms. This one, I don't know whether it's the short legs because it's got quite short legs to those post holes, but uh, this one came in reasonably low at like 0.24 or around then, 0 0.24, 0 0.25. Uh, so a little bit lower, but still a uh, really nice vape for uh, direct lung and uh, beautifully crafted as usual from Adam. But what we're going to do now is uh, rip this guy out and put back in the coil that uh, I first had installed. This little micro alien from uh, Ketchy Coils, I think he's over in uh, the Czech Republic, uh, but this one is a alien fused Clapton, also N80, three strands of 32 gauge, uh, wrapped in 40 gauge, and uh, it came in at around that 0.7 to 0.8 ohms, and it's also a 2.5 millimeter in a diameter, which I think you probably want to go for with this particular deck. So uh, there you go. Very nicely done. But let's get into the recoiling and wicking. Now, one thing I did notice is uh, the adapter here, the 510 adapter, didn't work with my uh, Steam Crave Hadron Pro. All right. This is my usual building mod because it's nice and tall, gets the, uh, the deck up close to the camera for you to see, and it just it wouldn't make a connection would not make a connection on that 510. So it's a little bit of a shallower 510. Had to use my Odin DNA 250C for it to uh, to make a proper connection. So we'll do that again here. But uh, what we're gonna do is uh, rip this fucker out and uh, put in the mouth to lung coil.
And there you go, dickheads. That's how I've been doing it. As you can see, I thinned it out. I sort of chop it into a little bit of a kind of point or an arrow looking kind of um, shape. And then I do a little bit of an angular cut, kind of cut like on an angle. Because I just found if you just leave it thick and you don't get some of that sort of um, excess cotton out of there, you end up with um, dry hits. It doesn't have huge wicking holes. So you want to just chop a little off the top, but on an angle. So you're keeping the thickness of the cotton around your coil, but you're kind of thinning out the little ends where the liquid is going to be coming in from. Uh, and this seemed to work for me with like a 50-50 sort of uh, juice consistently. And with the um, direct lung stuff where I was doing more of a 70-30, a then you know you can even thin it out a little bit more because uh, nothing worse than a, a dry hit. But at least it's pretty easy to access and change the wick um, without draining your tank. You can just take it out of your device, pull the deck out, and uh, you can leave the tank all full. Uh, you'll have uh, you know, all of your liquid up in here. You can take the chimney out, you can take the deck out, and uh, as long as you keep your tank upside down like this, you can get access to the deck, which is brilliant. So I'm gonna chuck some liquid on here. Remember chamber logo with the outside logo. And then this little groove here, got to line up with the groove on the back. Whack it in your Boro device, you got to put your flush nut in, then goes our chimney, and we're ready for a drip tip. And there you go, dickheads, that is the Umbrella Mods Vision. Let's jump back up top, talk pros, cons, prices, and everything fucking else. So there you go, dickheads, the fucking vision. We're back into MTL mode now. Uh, coil's reading at 0.7 ohms, right where it was last time. And I'm running it at 17 watts with the 0.9 millimeter pins in there. Like I said, it sort of feels like about a 1.2 single hole pin on like a, another uh, tank. Not the crazy tightest sort of MTL airflow that you can get, but um, pretty restrictive. Uh, if you're into that sort of one, 1 1.2 millimeter airflow pin, you'll find two of the 0.9s will be uh, pretty much bang on. And yeah, the flavor, fantastic. So let's get into the pros and cons. What do I like? What do I dislike? Well, I think the biggest pro here is the airflow design. This is super fucking clever and it solves a age old problem for Boro tank users and that is condensation in your fucking box. All right, it's a problem with most of your bridges out there, some of them more than others, but inevitably you get condensation. If you're using direct lung stuff, you usually get more of it because you're producing more vapor, but even um, the sort of lowest wattage MTL um, RBAs will leave some, some condensation after a while, after you vape, there's some that settles out of the airflow and you get a little bit of a little puddle. You know, you take your boro tank out and there's a little sticky back to it. You know, there's some there's some liquid built up in there. You can't really avoid it unless you're putting in those condensation pads, which don't seem to be as common these days, but um, were really sort of popular with uh, boro bridges. Annoying, you know, you've got to clean them, you've got to dry them, or you've got to put new ones in there. This solves that condensation problem. There is zero condensation. It's impossible to have any liquid getting into your device. It is fucking awesome to be able to just take the tank out and not have to clean any sticky bits off. Uh, it just doesn't, you don't even get it up the top here because the airflow sort of, it's got to go all the way up and then get onto the top of your mod. I've never had condensation anywhere. So super fucking clever and I never had any gurgling either. It doesn't seem to cause a problem inside uh, the deck or anything like that. So really, really cool how they've uh, managed to come up with a way to, uh, to get rid of uh, a bit of a fucking hassle with Boro mods. And even when you're using it in direct lung mode, it doesn't seem to be restrictive. There's still plenty of air getting down that chimney, getting to your coils. So if you do want to use a, a looser, higher wattage kind of um, vape, then, um, so if you are looking for a looser, higher wattage uh, experience, you're not going to be sort of limited by this chimney design. So yeah, fucking 
big thumbs up, huge pro on this. Very, very cool. The machining and build quality is really, really high for something that's not super expensive. We'll get to that shortly. It's not a fucking $150, $200 fucking um, bridge. And the build quality on this thing is very, very high. The flavor is also fantastic. Now, I think it really shines in mouth to lung mode. I think the flavor is comparable to some of the best mouth to lung experiences I've had with a Boro bridge. In direct lung mode, it's still good, but it's not as good as uh, bridges that give you undercoil airflow uh, in direct lung mode. I still think that something like my Mob 2 beats this um, for flavor or even the Mob Mini and things like that beats it for flavor in direct lung mode. But in mouth to lung mode where I really like it, uh, it's fantastic. I like the post design, it's easy to install your coils, easy to get set up, and you can get access to your deck midway through a tank if you need to. It all fits together really nicely, the tolerances. It's uh, got a few more bits and pieces, a few more parts to it, but once you get your head around it, it's pretty simple. Another clever little trick that they've put in there is the fill port. You've got two of them. You've got one on the front, which will fit all your standard sort of Boro applications. But if you do have one of those mods that has a side window, uh, things like, I think it's your Delros and stuff like that, usually have a, a little side window, you can actually access uh, your fill port from there. So very simple. You know, just having two holes, one on each side, and the same strip of silicon that um, that plugs both of them. Like that a fucking lot. Very, very cool. And another little pro on the airflow design, it doesn't matter what box you're putting this in. Obviously, you've got to have a compatible you know, nut connection for that flush nut up the top there. But uh, as long as you've got that, it doesn't matter where your box uh, lets air into the, uh, the chamber because you're bypassing all of that. You've got air coming through the top there. Uh, and it doesn't get in the way of your lips. One thing that I've noticed, one thing that I thought could be a problem uh, is maybe your lips getting in the way of that airflow coming in right by your drip tip, but it doesn't seem to be a problem at all. It's raised up sufficiently, that little platform for your 510 connection on your drip tip, so you never have any problems at all. So yeah, the airflow is a fucking huge pro ski. Solves quite a few problems. So cons, what could I fucking complain about here? Uh, not much, but there is um, maybe just some compatibility issues. Some mods are not going to like the threads on this uh, flush nut. Now, I've been running it in my billet box, no problems at all. Uh, also ran it in my new stubby, no problems. Uh, but when it came to things like like the block from Bastia Mods, uh, it just wouldn't thread in far enough to, um, to, to make a connection with the tank. The tank was sort of able to wiggle around in there. So a um, bit of a, a problem there. I don't know whether it's the threading on the Bastia um, or whatever, but yeah, couldn't use it on that particular mod. So you may find some devices out there where that flash nut doesn't work with, but on all your billet boxes and on the stubby, no problems whatsoever, but just something to point out. Wicking is a little bit tricky on this guy. Uh, the first time I did it, it seemed to work all right for the first couple of hours, but then I started to get some dry heat Hits, and so I had to re-wick it with less cotton. And as you can see from my little uh, tutorial there, you gotta be a little bit kind of precise about it. You gotta trim off some bits where you maybe normally wouldn't, you gotta cut on a little bit of an angle, and you, you gotta kind of be exact with that cotton there, otherwise it's gonna fucking dry hit. Uh, and it is deceptive. Those holes, they're not huge, and so if you don't let enough liquid get uh, into your cotton, then uh, it's not gonna taste great. So yeah, a little bit more finicky than some other uh, Boro bridges when it comes to the wicking. Not all of your drip tips are going to be compatible with this, not that they won't fit in there, but there is a sort of certain width to where the connection point is. And if you've got a wide 510 drip tip, it's going to look fucking silly. It's going to overhang the, uh, the connection there. So you're going to need either the drip tips that they supply or uh, something of your own that is narrow enough, like I've got here with the um, Monarchy tip, um, that's going to look good. Otherwise, it's going to be a bit dicky, but not a big deal, just something to point out. The only other thing that that I would mention in the way of cons is um, I think the flavor for direct lung isn't as good as some other bridges. As I mentioned, things like the Mob, the Mob 2, um, the, um, the Wicked, 
um, you know, line of, of bridges, whether it be the bridged V2, V1, 1.2, uh, I don't think the flavor is quite as good when you're using it in direct lung mode. In mouth to lung mode, it seems to be really good, as I said, punches with some of my favorites when uh, I use it in MTL mode. But um, when it came to direct lung, I tried it with the 2.1 millimeter pins and I tried it with no pins at all. And I just found the, the side airflow didn't give me as good a flavor. Still good, not bad, but uh, I think where it really shines for me is uh, as a mouth to lung device. But that's all I really got in the way of complaints. No fucking deal breakers for me in the way of cons. So uh, what are they gonna set you back? Well, that is another pro ski because for something that I think is built really, really well, the, the quality on the machining is a cut above uh, a lot of bridges out there and uh, the design, well, yeah, very fucking clever. You're only looking at $100 US. Uh, I've seen it on a bunch of websites for, uh, yeah, 100, 110. Can't put any links in the description and now I can't tell you what sites they are. Use your fucking Google Foo skills and find one for yourself. But $100 is uh, damn affordable for something, as I said, that has got some really high quality finish and uh, vapes fucking great and tell you what, not something that I've seen in a Boro Bridge before. So uh, with that being said, dickheads, I think I'll bugger off out of here, but um, yeah, nice to see something truly innovative in the uh, airflow side of things for a Boro Bridge, basically taking the same concept we've seen on uh, loads of RTAs and uh, finally applying it to a Boro Bridge. So uh, I'll get the fuck out of here. I'll put the usual Instagram and Facebook links down in the description if you want to see what this Muppet gets up to outside the YouTube videos. If you want to support my channel, please do hit the like, hit the subscribe button always helps me out share the video around particularly hard these days to get traction because of youtube age restricting everything but if you really want to keep me doing my thing then think about hitting some of my support links as i say every video this is an independent channel which means i don't get paid to do reviews i don't get sponsorships i don't do any sneaky jumping the queue fees i want to make sure you're getting a truly unbiased opinion on the products I'm talking about. But to keep that up, a bit of public support is how I pay the bills. Hit my Patreon page, a special content. I do a vlog on there once a week. You won't see here on YouTube. And you get access to my little Patreon community. We've got a Facebook group and a Zoom room we all hang out with. You can have a beer with me and ask me all your dumb questions. And those fuckers keep me behind the lens. So bloody cheers. But if you can't, that's all good. Sit back, sub on your fucking dicks off or your bloody tits off. I couldn't give a shit what it is you vape on, whether your Boro's got bottom airflow, top airflow, or maybe it's not a Boro at all. As long as you're not banging the bloody bungers, that's all that matters. Cheers for tuning in. Cheery fucking oh. <laughs>